So we've obviously heard and seen your complaints about video card availability for the newer GPUs. And there's not a lot we can do about that situation, but we thought, you know, this is a really good time to talk about sort of refurbishing and doing preventative maintenance on your existing video cards, whether they're ancient and shaped like an F1 car like this one, or maybe more practical like this GTX 760 that was in uh, one of our team members' systems for, for many years since it came out. So we have a stack of GPUs here today where I've got three or four of them, and I'm going to run before and after tests. We're going to keep all of our same really heavy GN standards for testing and apply it to cards that have been out for a while, but not only been out for a while, but have been in systems. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So this one that looks like a race car <laughs> came out of our distributor's personal system. It is, uh, well, it's been in use for a long time. And so the goal is clean out all the dust, but more than that, we want to replace the thermal paste and look at what does just replacing the paste do if you're already clean. So this card is a 1080 Ti FTW3. You'll see it's marked CPU test. We used this on our CPU test bench for over a year back when it was the most powerful card, and it's got a lot of burning on it. But we also kept it very clean because it's a lab environment. So there's no cleaning to do here, but we're going to replace the paste on it and look at the thermal performance and also look at the frequency scaling performance so we can see how does the frequency boosting change or does it sustain a different frequency on these newer architecture cards and then also how's the thermal performance change. Okay, so let's take all these out and I've already done all the testing of before. Now we just need to do the testing, the cleaning and the testing of after. I also have a GTX 970. So this idea came in from one of our viewers about a month ago who said, hey, Steve, because I have to keep using my older card, can you do a preventative maintenance video? And uh, I think that's a really good topic because you can extend the life out of your existing cards a lot. OK, so the problem basically is running a video card for a long time in a system. Long service life is great, and you should always push to keep your hardware going as long as possible. It's, it's good economically. It stretches your investment and uh, also just good because you're not producing a bunch of extra e-waste. If you want to upgrade more frequently, cool. Times like now don't allow that generally. So the best thing you can do is there's always overclocking as an option to try and extend gaming performance out of it. But to extend the service life, the usable life of the system, uh, not just doing cleaning, but taking the thing apart completely and rebuilding it can be helpful. You have to be careful to not mess it up in the process. You have to be careful of things like thermal pads. Thermal pads like the, the sort of canvasy or the Fuji poly pads on Founders Edition cards in particular and reference cards, those can tear. So you'll want to do some research in advance before taking your card apart. And if it's out there, try to find the thickness of the thermal pads so that you can buy some and have them on hand and ready to replace the ones that are already on the card. You need to get the exact same thickness because if you buy a pad that's not thick enough, then it might not make contact with the heat sink, ergo does nothing. If you buy a pad that's too thick, then it can start bowing the PCB, which is also bad. So do a little bit of research, see if you can find someone who's, who's mapped it out. Uh, sometimes the company RMA departments will help you with that. So preventative maintenance basically just means preventing a failure by getting ahead of it. And we're gonna replace the uh, pads on some of these, paste for sure and get the dust out of here and then do before and after testing. Now this card I chose because even though it's completely clean, it gives us a representative scenario of how it would be if you had a good case that filters a lot of dust, if you're a particularly clean person, uh, what would the difference be like just from replacing the interfaces after a lot of abuse, uh, even though there's not much dust in there. And separately, there are 
thermal sensors. So there's thermistors on this board. There's one on the back of the GPU, additional one on the front. I think there are three on memory and two or something. Two, it's two or three on the uh, MOSFETs and inductors as well. So this will allow us to get better measurements of the whole card, not just the GPU from a repaste. And then the cards we're working with, so I've pre-tested all of these. We have a GTX 970 FTW model. This is from Patrick Stone on our team. And this is from our distributor. This is an HD 5750. He used to use this in sort of an office, uh, like, like Microsoft Office type machine. So this one, it's a little dustier, but none of these are particularly bad for dust. Uh, but this one's probably the worst of them. The paste is going to be cracked, though, I think, on a lot of these. This one is also from Patrick Stone. This is from his, his uh, backup computer. It's a GTX 760. It's from an i5-2500 system. And uh, this one could use a full cleaning. I can actually see a good amount of dust on the thermal pads for the memory. So, or, or sorry, for the VRM components. So that may actually get us a benefit as well. And then that's just the 1080 Ti that we used in our lab. So let's, um, let's start with the worst of them. So this one is an HD 5750, and we need to really clean this one. That should take care of that. I'm actually going to clean it. Uh, if you want to buy a toolkit, our GN Teardown Toolkit is on store.cameraxis.net and has all the tools you'll need to take apart most video cards today. So this looks like just four screws, alternating corners. I'm going to do it. I'm just checking the tension before I unscrew them to get a feel for where it is now. And these are all still factory tight. And if you need to, you can track screws on our mod mats, also on store.gamersnexus.net, although I think we're out of stock right now because they're in, always in super high demand. But this one does not really require tracking. So there's a lot of dust on the back. We'll get that in a bit. Oh, man. That's, wow, holy crap. That was so on there. This isn't even that dirty. It's This isn't like meant to be a, a YouTube restoration type video. Uh, the cleaning will just be a byproduct of what I was really setting out to do, which is replace paste. That is so hardened, that paste, that it's basically part of the aluminum. <laughs> so we should see a pretty significant uplift from fixing that. Uh, you can even see the imprint from the silicon on the, on the aluminum, on the heat sink. So, for this, honestly, I think it's going to be easiest for me to just run this under water. We have an air compressor, but um, I, it just, I don't know, it's just, it's metal. And once I disconnect the electronics and pull the fan out of there, uh, I can basically run it under water, rinse it all off, spray it all off, and then I'll go put it under the hand dryer in the bathroom because it's just, uh, just dust. So. That would get it back clean and, and dry. Wouldn't necessarily recommend that for people unless you kind of know what you're doing just so you don't accidentally get water on something that is electronic. Um, you could use an air compressor or a can of compressed air. So that one's going to be fairly straightforward. Let's open the next one and I'll do all these at once. That goes there. This is probably the next worst. If you look at the fan blades actually from my perspective. So this one came from from Patrick Stone and has been in houses with dogs. <laughs> so uh, it will probably make me sneeze, but also it's going to have a good amount of dust in there and the paste should be pretty beat up from years of use. It's funny how trivial these are. The new designs are, are not typically too difficult, but some of them can be a little convoluted. So there's a base plate here. We're going to take that off as well and maybe replace the thermal pads on this. All right, there's the base plate. Wasn't really doing anything, actually. This might have been literally doing nothing. Okay, so it's like partially covering these. This actually wasn't really doing anything. This is kind of a, today we would, we would fail this as a design. It may have been fine for the heat they were dealing with back then, but there should be a thermal pad connecting the base plate to the memory. <laughs> so otherwise it's not really going to sync it very well, is it? So uh, I want to fix that. I want to put just like a half millimeter pad in there when I rebuild this. And then there's the rest of the thermal pads. That's for the VRM, which is all to the left of the GPU. Otherwise that's not too bad. 
we do need to take this shroud off. Oh, gross. She's gloves, too. Mm. <laughs> okay, that's that's nice. So this is going to be trivial to take apart and put back together, which is nice. A lot of these older designs, especially the mid-range ones, were kind of like this. And they still are mostly today, but there's more thermal pads and better interfaces normally involved now, not always. Okay, not too bad. That's not too bad. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm definitely just gonna spray this off. That'll get most of it, either with air or with water. It doesn't really matter, but dry it off immediately to make sure there's no long-term corrosion or anything. Uh, so the paste, same thing. This one's pretty, pretty dried and uh, cracked. So we're gonna want to replace that. I'm gonna do the same thing here on this one and uh, take off the shroud. That will make it a lot easier to clean. This one, the the paste is a lot worse than the dust. Wow, that's not bad. That's definitely in the best shape out of all of them so far. So it came off immediately. There's, it didn't fight me really. Paste is is not completely hardened dry. Uh, I can still push it around pretty easily. And this one I think will be easy. There, there might not be as much improvement on this. This is a 970. So I'm gonna leave the rest of the parts on this. I will take them off. This one kind of sucks to take apart, but it has the most thermal sensors on it. So I'm the most curious about it. So these I've taken apart many times, these FTWs. And they're well built. There's a lot of screws. If you happen to have this card, we do have an old teardown on the channel as well. This card is, is clean enough that I'll actually just make it dirtier if I wear those. That magnet looks like it has, like, it, it looks like an actual iron atom or something. It's got like ferrous elements sticking out of it. Good job, EVGA. This was the year they went absolutely psychotic with their thermal pads because they had that ACX catastrophe. So this was the result, and it was a good it was a good uh, response to a, a controversy. Companies could learn a lot. Oh yes, the reason the GN toolkit has hex heads one of them is for these I used to deal with a lot of DVI ports they use a hex 5 which is also useful on some founders cards this board's in good shape I don't know that we're going to improve this very much Wow, oh, great shape. All right. Well, this one should have the least improvement, but who knows? It'll depend on how tight things are too. Paste, paste is definitely a little hardened. So paste is kind of beat up, but everything else is really looking good here. In fact, I can even still see the outline where I put thermocouples when I originally tested it. So it's in good shape. So I just pulled, uh, the thermal pads off one of these. There was some copper shrapnel in it, which is kind of weird. This isn't like the ideal way to do this. So uh, you can blast all this out with an air compressor, which we have. I don't particularly like using it um, for this, but probably I'll end up using it. So the reason I'm starting with water is just because it will weigh down the dust and get it down the drain instead of in the air. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend you do this. I'd probably say bring it outside and use an air compressor and uh and and just stop there uh what i'm going to do is run it under water and then i'm going to take it to our office hand dryer which is really high speed hot air and get this thing just as dry as before it goes underwater that way there's no corrosion or anything so and remember there's no electronics attached to this right now
But my goal is to just send the dust down the drain instead of into the air that I'm breathing. All right, I'll deal with the paste separately with the rubbing alcohol. This is our uh, video set for Disappointment Build 2019. So I want to sit down at level with it. That way I can breathe in all of the bacteria when it uh, sucks in the air from the room and sprays it down at this metal. Just think I can get more of it. It's like better airflow for, for, for my uh, immune system. <laughs> So that was pretty good. I'm happy with that. Uh, I was careful to make sure, one, I didn't soak this side in water, but I also made sure to really get that hand dryer, which is stupid high CFM, like it's probably higher than our air compressor, uh, and it's hot air. So I made sure to really get that in any screw holes on both of these and make sure those are thoroughly dried out. I'm pretty happy with the cleanliness here. There's some dust staining on it. I can get that off with rubbing alcohol and blue shop towel. That'll be quick and easy. This is very clean. That was about the easiest time I've ever had cleaning heat sinks. Now, again, detach all electronics from this. And if you do it that way, if you're going to copy my style here, make sure it is 100% no questions dry before you remount it and get all thermal interfaces off of it. Paste you can wash off because you're going to replace it anyway. But if you're keeping thermal pads, take them off first. Okay, let's move on to the next cards. And uh, I'll do all these one heat sink at a time, and then we'll do the boards and the shrouds. Time to get into some of the changes in thermal performance. This takes into account both the thermal paste reapplication and the heat sink cleaning. The 1080 Ti that we'll look at a little bit later in these charts is more of just a thermal paste reapplication benchmark because it was completely clean as a heat sink. We're using our standard GPU reviews methodology for thermal testing and applying high load until steady state. Ambient is controlled at 21C for all the tests. The GTX 760 was the worst and in amazing ways. The card launched in 2013. It was never taken apart, and so its original paste had been in use for nearly eight years. Dust buildup was more meaningful in this card than the others as well, and it had more time to collect that dust. At a fixed fan speed of 65%, the GTX 760 was 80 degrees in the original testing, which is actually fine. It's just we had a lot of room to improve. The post repaste and cleaning result improved that a staggering 12 degrees. That's one of the biggest drops we've ever seen in a GPU temperature change from a modification, and we've tested a lot of GPUs. That's the same RPM and test conditions. So we've done a lot to improve this card, but under auto conditions, it's also improved. We're still seeing a 10 degree reduction, except that this is even more important than just the temperature alone, because the auto RPM is dropping to 1789, whereas it was 2030 RPM to maintain 79 degrees or 10 degrees higher, before we reapplied paste and cleaned out the dust. In other words, if you were okay previously with 80 degrees because that's what it had been for years, well, now you can reduce the noise significantly when temperature normalized or vice versa. We could probably drop another 500 RPM or so and still be around the same temperature or cooler than the before result. The GTX 970 saw no real change in this set of tests. We were within variance for both this card was relatively clean and didn't have as many gaming hours on it. It had still been used heavily for years, just not as many as the 760, and thermal cycles are what matter here. Here's the chart for the HD 5750 F1 style race car video card from our distributor. In a like-for-like -like test at 60% fan speed for each, we saw a reduction against all three GPU measurement points of about 3 to 5 degrees on average. This card is from 2009. It's the oldest of those we tested. I personally used to have an HD 4870 from around the same era, but this 5750 aged well. At least, it aged well thermally, maybe not for gaming. The relatively low TDP helps a lot, and it also helps that this was mostly used in an office PC. It did some gaming over the years, but it didn't go through the thermal cycling that was as abusive as the GTX 760 tested before it. Thermal cycles are what largely dictates how interfaces age, and despite unearthing some improvements from cleaning out the fin stack and repasting it, this card is a great testament to how it's not always a magic bullet to just rebuild and clean a video card. Sometimes you get lucky, and it just maintains its performance for over a decade, like this one. The 1080 Ti FTW3 was the newest, cleanest, best-built card that we had tested. 
It also had the highest MSRP when you compare all of them from launch or even adjust for inflation. It also has the most sensors on it, with NTC thermistors around the board. This board was clean enough, even though we reviewed it in May of 2017 and used it for CPU testing for over a year, that there was no improvement. We were within error run to run, so we have three distinct results to paint for the fuller picture. It's, again, not magic to just clean and repaste the card. And in fact, sometimes it's a total waste of time in a functional sense. But there's one benefit still to taking apart this 1080 Ti, even though it didn't help. And that's just that it's a good idea to make sure things are really clean underneath the heatsink, where you can't see as well, to ensure that no deeper issues form in the future. It's like doing preventative maintenance on anything else, like a car. One card saw a 12 degree drop and huge potential to reduce its noise, so that's a quality of life improvement for the user as well. One saw a more moderate 3 to 5 degree change, which is still worthwhile, and you can still get a slight RPM reduction. And the last two could have been left alone. So that's it for the cleaning of video card content. We had a few different results. Again, we saw extremely positive results on the 760, saw pretty good results on the 5750, basically nothing on the 1080 Ti, but uh, even with the situations where you maybe don't see an actual improvement in thermals, it's still worth going through and just making sure that things clean every now and then because what you're really doing is prolonging the usable life of the system and it gives you a chance to get in there and find problems before they uproot themselves later. So for example, if you take the video card out and there's nothing really wrong with it, you have nothing to gain from cleaning it, you might, in the process of doing this, discover that your CPU heatsink is getting jammed up or maybe one of your case fans uh, has died or something like that. So preventative maintenance is always a great idea, but there is potentially a lot to gain on some of these cards that have been in the field for five, six, seven years if you want to keep using them. And I mean, a 760 is still a great card by most standards. It's perfectly usable in lower end gaming machines even today with lighter weight non AAA titles or as a machine for, for an office machine, something like that. If you want to grab our toolkit, they are in stock and shipping now, so they are on store.gamersexus.net. Uh, we've had really positive reception for these, and I think this is our third restock of these now, and they always sell really quickly, but you can grab them on the store if you want one for taking apart your video card. Uh, these will take care of most video cards on the market. That's it for this one, thanks for watching. Take a look at your system and make sure it's clean. Subscribe for more as always and check back for more content. We'll see you all next time.